This playlist will walk you through filling out a true table and then reading off both the properties of individual formulas on your true tables, relationships between formulas in a true table, and the validity or invalidity of arguments, these premises and conclusion you've got on your true table. So when we start our true table, we put our logical crosshairs in here. In the upper left-hand corner, we'll put in all of the capitalized letters that symbolize simple statements in all the formulas that we're going to evaluate in our truth table. This truth table has four formulas that use P and Q. So we'll put P and Q up in the upper left-hand corner there. In the upper right-hand segment, we'll put in each of the individual formulas that we're going to evaluate on this truth table. So we put those formulas in on the upper right-hand side. Then on the lower left-hand side, we're going to fill out our guide columns. Our guide columns are just a systematic way of specifying every possible combination of truth values for each of the simple statement letters that we've got in our guide columns and hence that we've got in our formulas. Now, the way that we do this is to execute a mechanical algorithm based on the number of rows that we need. The number of rows that we need is determined by the number of letters that we have for simple statements. The number of rows is going to be equal to 2 to the n, where n just equals the number of simple statement letters. So in this truth table, we've got two simple statement letters. So the number of rows that we're going to have is 2 to the n equals 2 to the 2, which equals 4. If we had three letters, it would be 2 to the n equals 2 to the third equals 8. Once we know the number of rows, then we start at the innermost letter, and we alternate off true, false, true, false, until we get to the number of rows that we need, whether it's 4 or 8 or 16. Then we go to the next letter, and we dump, double the number of trues and falses in the pattern, again, following the pattern until we get to the number of rows that we need. And we do this for each letter moving outward until we get to the last letter. In this case, that mechanical process leads us to this combination of truth values here in our guide columns. Once we've spelled out all the possible combinations in the systematic way, then we want to copy those truth values under every instance of the individual simple statement letters on our truth table. So we'll copy all the truth values for P from our guide columns, and then we'll copy all the truth values for Q from our guide columns. Now we're ready to start evaluating the formulas by filling out the body of the truth table. And we're going to do this by first determining which connectives we want to start with, and then the next and the next until we get to the very end. So the way that we decide this is by looking at the connectives that are in the greatest number of brackets. We always start with the connectives that are in the greatest number of brackets. So we think of ourselves as a little logical insect inside an onion, and we're eating our way out through each of the layers of that onion until we get to the outside. The last connective that we do will be called the main connective, and it will be the one that gives us the truth value for the whole formula. So inside these brackets, we have a dot and we have a tilde. When we have a tilde like this with a binary connective, the tilde always goes first, and then the binary connective. So we've got tilde, that applies to Q. So we're gonna look under that Q, use our for the tilde, and fill out that column first. The next logical connective that we're gonna do is the dot, because it's the second connective inside those brackets after the tilde. Then we'll go outside the brackets and do that last tilde. That's the main connective, and that's the one that will allow us to figure out the truth value for the formula every different way the world could be. So I want to stop the video, think about the rule for the tilde, and try and fill out that column on the truth table, then start the video and compare what you did to what I do in the video. So our rule for the tilde is that the tilde has the opposite truth value of whatever it negates.
So in this case, our tilde negates Q. So we'll look under Q and we'll follow our rule there. So when Q is true, tilde Q will be false. When Q is false, tilde Q is untrue. Q is true, tilde Q is false, Q is false, tilde Q is true. So that gives us the truth value for tilde Q, every different way the word could be. Now we've got the, for, the truth value for this formula. Next, we go to our dot. Our dot is a binary connective. It modifies or conjoins P and tilde Q. So we're going to look under that tilde, and we're going to look under that P. I'm going to use our rule for the dot to determine the truth value of the whole formula. You might want to stop the video, think about the rule for the dot, and try and fill in that column. Then compare what you did to what I do once you restart the video. So our rule for the dot says that a conjunction or a dot is only going to be true when both of the conjuncts are true. In other cases, it will be false. So we're going to look under that tilde here. We're going to look under that P. I'm going to use our rule for the dot. So when P is true, but tilde Q is false, then our dot will be false. When P is true and tilde Q is true, then they're both true. And that is the one case that makes our dot true. When P is false, tilde Q is false, the conjunction is also false. And when P is false and tilde Q is true, they're still not both true. And so the conjunction is false. So now we've got a truth value under this dot for this whole formula inside our brackets. Now we go outside of brackets to the tilde. The tilde says not everything in here. So we're going to look under the dot, which gives us our truth value for the formula inside the brackets. And we'll use our rule for the tilde to fill out the truth value for the column under the dot to give us the truth value for that formula every different way the world could be. Again, you might want to stop the video, remind yourself of the rule for the tilde, and try and fill out that column. Then start the video again and compare what you did to what I do in the video. So again, the dot has the opposite truth value of whatever it modifies. We're looking, sorry, the tilde has the opposite truth value of whatever it modifies. We're looking under the dot and we're taking the truth value for the formula inside the brackets as the truth value for the dot and using our for the tilde. So when uh, formula is false, the denial of the tilde of the formula will be true. Formula is true, the tilde is false. Formula is false, the tilde is true. Formula is false, the tilde is true. This is our last connective here, this tilde. So that gives us the truth value for this whole formula every different way the world could be. In the next video, we'll continue filling out the body at the truth table.